about the human rights in China, but in Africa, the fundamental human rights is the right to end poverty. Imagine what other partnership could be more important to us than to engage with China. Because already we see that in the last 100 years, they have moved 400 million people out of poverty. My name is Hafsat Abiola Costello. I'm from Nigeria, and I run a company called China Africa Bridge. It facilitates um, cooperation and business between China and Africa. Play is a very important factor for the physical, psychological and social development and has not been taken seriously enough in a, in a child's development and a child's part of the life. And if, if that's been ignored, uh, we are not breaking the cycle of violence or uh, getting the uh, families out of poverty or preventing diseases. This is a, absolutely a critical element of uh, development of, of an individual and also of a nation. I'm Johan uh, Olav Koss, I'm the president and CEO and founder of uh, Right to Play International. Play is the nature of what we like to do. I mean, play is um, fun. And then in addition to that, Right to Play has created a, an opportunity to have educational messages using the play as the vehicle for this messaging. For China, the win is very easy to see. Um, the Chinese, for their own industrial development, um, need access to resources. The Chinese sometimes pay us in kind and build a road or build a bridge. Whether China will use that road to take out resources is their own issue. But that road is also available for African people to use to do business within Africa. So for me, it is a win-win. We're protecting the kids. So the kid is in here. Yeah. The mosquito is that one chasing. We are working on games who are teaching children why they should sleep under the bed, bed nets and so what actually f happens while how they can protect themselves how the malaria uh, is transmitted from the mosquito to the body and why children is dying they're, they're just screaming uh, get out of the netty <laughs> you feel so tired when you have malaria. You know, um, if, for example, in America, there's a part of the U.S. estate that has a surplus in a certain crop, or, um, a grain, then for that year, America's development aid is really about um, distributing that grain in maybe in an African country or Haiti or Latin, in, an, in a Latin American country. This is not what development aid should be about. We have clear gaps in Africa, maybe with infrastructure, maybe in technology, agricultural technology even, making our agricultural production more productive. But the way that we're now doing the development aid from the U.S., for example, does not really address that. I met a girl. She said, you know, she'd been living under pressure from uh, a male who's visiting their home. She's only 11 years old, and he's been kissing her hands, asking to be, you know, have sexual intercourse with her. And she said, you know what, through these games, I've gained so much self-confidence and understanding of what I can protect myself. This is an amazing, strong story. I just heard today, and I saw the strength of her in her voice and her eyes when she described this scenario and what she's been under type of pressure. In the end, I'm not looking for Africa to attain the level of wealth that I see in the US or I see in Europe. Because I think sometimes this level of wealth comes with its own costs. The African is already rich in community. 
But we want to be able to take care of the children that are sick. We want to be able to take care of our elders when they grow old. We want to be able to offer our young people decent and dignified work. This is the way we start to move forward. Who are you?